Hello, my name is Shahriyar Shahriyari, and this is a lecture in a series of lectures on introductory combinatorics based on my book, An Invitation to Combinatorics. The subject of this lecture is graph theory, an introduction to some vocabulary of graph theory, walks, paths, trails, bridges, cycles, and circuits. So let's get started. Um, what will this lecture cover? I, I will remind you what simple graphs are, or mo what multigraph and a general graph are. I have a video uh, just on those with, with a little bit more explanation, but I will remind you of whatever we need uh, here as well. I will We will also introduce what walks, trails, paths, circuits, and cycles are. So these are some vocabulary that we need to know for future lectures. And we will prove a lemma that if you, um, if you have two vertices in a graph that are joined by a walk, they're also joined by a path. If there's a walk, there is a path. Uh, we will also talk about connected components, connected graphs, bridges, and we will prove that an edge is a bridge if and only if it's not sitting on any cycles. We will add, we'll end by telling you what forests and trees are and giving you a preview of next video, which will be solely on trees. Okay, so a simple graph is a pair of sets, vertices and edges. Uh, v is a non-empty set of vertices. So uh, as an example, that could be the set one through seven. Those could be my vertices. And the way we think about them is we think of them as dots, as nodes uh, sitting somewhere. And then we have edges. Some of these uh, vertices are adjacent to each other. They're connected by an edge. Um, and E is a, is a possibly empty set of edges. We don't have to have edges, but you could. And each edge is a pair of vertices because it tells you which two vertices are connected by an edge. So for example, five, six might be an edge as might be one, two, two, three, three, four, and uh, four, five. Uh, e, elements of this second set, are subsets of size two of the first set of the vertices. Every edge is made up of two vertices. Two vertices tell us which edge we are talking about. Um, so for example, in this case, um, the set E is, is these sets of pairs of vertices. Now, a multigraph is a graph with repeated edges. So in this case, uh, the set of edges E is not a set anymore. It's a multi-set. A multi-set means that you allow repeated elements. So for example, here, we're allowing two four fives, two of uh, that pair of vertices, and that makes it a multigraph. A multigraph, um, we have multiple edges. A general graph is one where not only you allow repeated edges, but you allow root loops. And one way to think about that is that E this time doesn't just contain pairs of elements. Sometimes it contains uh, multisets such that seven, seven, um, a multiset that has just one element in it, but, but twice. Okay, so now let's talk about walks, trails, circuits, paths, and cycles, and what those are. If you have a general graph, then a sequence of edges, x0, x1, that's one edge, x1, x2, that's another edge, and so forth, of edges is called a walk of length m joining x0 and xm. It's not just any sequence of edges. It has to be that any two consecutive edges share a vertex. So x0, x1 is an edge, but the next one is x1, x2, and the next one after that is x2 something and so forth. And, and such a thing is called a walk. The best way to think about a walk is to think that you start with a vertex, you go through an edge that's incident with it, you get to another vertex, then you go through another edge and you get to another vertex and so forth. So a vertex and edge, a vertex and edge and so forth. Here though, um, I sometimes will just denote the edges um, just to avoid clutter. And sometimes I will just denote the vertices and just tell you, you start from this vertex and, and where you go. Um, in a simple graph, that will never cause confusion. In a general graph, it actually might, because if there are multiple edges, for example, you have to be clear about which one of the two edges you, you, you're talking about. So for example, if in, in this graph that I have here on the, on the left, if you go from four to nine to six, um, to eight to nine to six to seven, that's a walk from uh, four to seven. Note that in a walk, you're allowed to repeat edges, go to an edge again, and repeat vertices. There's no rule that says you can't do that. You just have to start with a vertex, go to an edge, get to another vertex, and then just keep going like that. That's called a walk. Now, if the beginning point, at the beginning vertex and the last vertex are the same, the walk is called closed. Otherwise, if they're not the same, the walk is open. For example, this first walk we had, four, nine, six, eight, nine, six, seven, is an open walk. On the other hand, if you do, if you go from four to nine to six to ten to nine to six to eight to three, back to four, this is a closed walk. We went back to where we started. Now, if a walk has distinct edges, 
then it's a trail. Now, this you can have distinct edges without having distinct vertices. You can go through vertices for a trail. You just can't go through um, edges uh, twice. Any, a, any edge that you go through once, you can't repeat that anymore. Like So for example, if you go from four to nine, to six, to eight, to nine, to 10, to seven, that is a trail, uh, a trail from four to seven. The, the vertex nine was repeated, but no edge was repeated. Um, a closed trail is a circuit. So again, you can you cannot um, go through the, the same edge twice, but you can repeat vertices if you like. So for example, if you start at nine this time, go to four, to three, to eight, to nine, to 10, to six, and back to nine, then what you have is a circuit. You started at nine, ended at nine, so you closed it, but you did repeat nine uh, a couple of times, but you did not repeat any edge. Um, so this is a circuit. Now, a walk that has distinct vertices is called a path. Um, an open walk that has distinct vertices is called a path. Um, so, so if you have distinct vertices, you also have to have distinct edges because if you want to go to an edge twice, you'll have to repeat the vertices on, on the two ends of it. So for example, if you start at four, go to nine, to six, to eight, to three, to two, to seven, this is a walk, a path from four to seven. It's also a walk from four to seven, but because it doesn't have any repeated vertices, and as a result, no repeated edges, it's called a path. Paths are always open. So we don't allow, all the vertices are distinct, including the first and the last one. Now, if you have a closed path, then it's a cycle. So um, a path can't really be closed, but, but if you close a path, then that's called a cycle. So for example, if you start with four, to go to three, go to two, go to one, go to six, go to 10 and, and, and then to nine and back to four, then you have a cycle. Okay, so just to remind, this, this is a lot of vocabulary. Just let me remind you again, one more time, what this is, you'll have to get used to this vocabulary. So a path is always open and there's no repeated vertices or edges. Now a cycle is always closed. You always start from someplace and come back where you started but also you do not repeat any vertices or edges. In fact, we've made two kinds of distinctions. Is the thing that we're talking about open or closed? Does it start and end at the same place um, or not? And whether or not we're repeating stuff. And paths and cycles, one of them is open, one of them is closed, uh, but neither one of them have repeated vertices or edges. A trail, on the other hand, could be open, could be closed. You can't repeat any edge, but it's okay to repeat vertices. And a circuit is always closed, but it's, again, no repeated edges, but, uh, but repeated vertices are, are okay. And, and the most general thing of all is a walk that could be open or closed, and you can repeat anything you like. Okay, so now for our first lemma, um, that, uh, that if you have a walk, you have a path. So let's we say we have a general graph. A general graph means, again, you're allowing multiple edges and, um, and loops. And let's say that you pick two vertices um, in that graph, and assume that there's a walk from X to Y. You can start an X and go through edges and vertices and get to Y. Now, if there's a walk, then there's a path. There's also a path from X to Y. Remember, remember that what's the difference? A walk can have repeated vertices and edges, but the path has no repeated vertices or edges. Now, the proof of this is kind of intuitive. In fact, I would urge you to stop this video. In fact, in all of these videos, but in the, in the graph theory videos, in particular, whenever there's a lemma, there's a fact that I'm about to prove, stop it and try to prove it yourself. You most likely, you could possibly come up with a proof. You most likely will come up with a good idea of why it is, but there might be some little subtle things that you'll have to worry about that you didn't worry about. But then that's a good time to look at the rest of the video and see if you are on the right track or not. So the proof of this is basically that if you have a walk from, from X to Y, joining x to y. So that means you started with x, then you went to another vertex, another vertex, and so on. Now, why would this not be a path? It would not be a path because there was some repetition of vertices. Uh, some vertices must have been repeated. If you repeated an edge, you also repeated vertices. So in any case, you would have repeated a vertex. And what you need to do is if, if vertex 47 was repeated, so that means it occurred here and occurred there, well, just eliminate that part of the walk between those two occurrences and throw away one of those V47s and one of those offending vertices. And then you will, you will still be going from X to Y, to, to y but this time you will not repeat, that don't have that repetition of um, V47. Now repeat that as many times as possible 
and you will get be able to get rid of all repetitions and uh, uh, what remains will be a path. So for example, here, I can go from X to Y and I'm going from X to V1 to V2 to V3 to V4 to back to V1 to V2 to V5 to V6 to Y. So I'm going from X to V2 to V3 to V4 back to V1 and V2 and then V5, V6 to Y. That's my walk. I'm putting arrows here just to show you how I'm traversing the graph. It's not that this is a directed graph. The, the actual edges, the, the one of the edges is just V1, V2. It doesn't have a direction. Um, directed graphs do, but that's subject of other, uh, other lectures. Um, this is not about directed graphs. The edges are just a pair of vertices. But the arrows here just tell you which way the walk is going. So if that's the case, then when I look at this walk, I say, well, I got to V1, but then I'm going to get to V1 again. And what I'm going to do is eliminate the, that, that side trip that I took and came back to V1. So, um, and, and that side trip was going from V1 to V2 to V3 to V4 back to V1. Get rid of that. And then you will have a, a path from X to Y. In this case, there was just one, one application of this idea of eliminating uh, unnecessary parts was enough. I, in some other graphs, you might have re to repeat that. But the point that you have to remember is that whenever there is a walk, there is a path. Okay, some more gra graph vocabulary. If, um, again, a general graph. And if you look at a bunch of the vertices, your favorite vertices in the graph, and if and if the following thing is true, if, if for every pair of vertices in W, you have a walk joining them. If you pick two vertices in that W, you can go from one to the other. Let's say that's true. That may or may not be true. But let's say that's true. And in addition, that if you're outside of this set W, you cannot um, come into W by a walk. So every vertex in W, every pair of vertices in W are connected by a walk, but the vertices outside of W are not. If that's the case, that doesn't have to be the case, but if you picked your vertices W in, from your whole big graph in such a way that this is true, then W is called a connected component of G. So this is a bunch of vertices that are connected to each other, connected in the sense that you can walk from any one of them to any of the other ones. Now, an edge of a general graph is called a bridge. If when you take it out, then uh, that increases the number of connected components. Um, and uh, so for example, here, I have a graph that has two connected components. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. These guys are connected together because you can go from any one of them to another one with a walk. Seven and eight are uh, another connected component. If I look at the edge three, four, that's a bridge. Because if you take it out, instead of two connected com components, now I have three. Um, the edge seven, eight is also a bridge. Because if you take it out, again, you have three con connected components. This time, two of the connected components just have one vertex in them. But from that vertex seven, you can't get anywhere else. So that vertex seven alone is a connected component. On the other hand, the, uh, the edge one, two is not a bridge because if you take it out, you still will have only two connected components. Now a connected graph is one where uh, you have only one connected component. The graph that I have on the right here is not connected because it has two connected components. There's parts of it that you can't get from one to the other. In a connected graph, you can get from any vertex to any other vertex because there's only one connected component. Okay, so now um, our second lemma is about bridges and cycles and their relationship. And what we want to say is that, again, if you're in a connected general graph, then if you have an edge and you're wondering, I, are you guys, are you a bridge or not? Here's a characterization. This will be one way of deciding if an if a, if a edge is a, a bridge or not. So then alpha is a bridge if and only if. When it's an if and only if, that means I'm giving you a characterization. This new thing I'm going to say could actually even have been the definition of a bridge because if I'm if I'm right and I can prove this theorem, then the two things are equivalent. So alpha is a bridge if and only if no cycle of G contains alpha. G might have cycles, but alpha is not sitting on any cycles. If that's the case, then alpha is a bridge. If alpha is a bridge, this is the case. So this is what I want to prove. Now, the contrapositive of that is the same statement. So instead of saying alpha is a bridge, if and only if no cycle of G contains alpha, I could say, well, that's the same as saying alpha is not a bridge, if and only if alpha is on a cycle of G. Um, these two statements are counterpositive of each other, are equivalent. If you know one, you know the other. So this is actually the one that I will prove, that if alpha is not a bridge, then it's sitting on a cycle. And this is if and only if, so I have to prove two directions. I have to also prove 
that if alpha is on a cycle, then it's not a bridge. So first I will do that. So assume that there is a cycle of G containing alpha, and I want to convince you that alpha is not a bridge. Well, if you take alpha out, will it make it disconnected? This was a connected uh, general graph. Um, so if, if alpha was sitting, at, so if you take an edge out, how could it make it uh, uh, disconnected? It would make it disconnected if the two vertices, you can't go from one to the other or the other, or from two vertices on this side of one of the, of this side of the edge and on the other side of the edge, you can't get uh, from one to the other. The problem will be that you took alpha out and you might be worried that, okay, I needed alpha to get from, from X to Y, uh, but, but if alpha is sitting on a cycle, that means there's another way to go around and you can uh, replace alpha with that, the rest of that cycle that alpha is sitting on. So, because in any walk that uses alpha, you can replace it with the rest of the cycle. Like for example, here in this, this one example here, I have a walk from V to W that uses alpha. And I might, might be worried that, well, if I take alpha out, I can't uh, go there, but alpha is sitting on some kind of a cycle. And uh, what I can do is that if alpha is gone, I'll use the rest of that cycle. Okay, and, and that will tell me that uh, I, the alpha is not a bridge because it can't disconnect a graph. Okay, now for the other direction, assume that this alpha is not a bridge. Why is it sitting on a cycle? Well, if it's not a bridge, when I take it out, it's still the graph will be connected. That means that there's another way to go from X to Y. So there must be a, a walk from X to Y, but when there is a walk, there is a path. So there must also be a path uh, from X to Y. Now that path from X to Y together with that O alpha will give me a cycle that contains alpha. So alpha was in the graph, but if you took it out, still was connected. So I had some other way of getting from one of its vertices to the other, put that edge back and you get your cycle. And so I've proved that um, an edge is not a bridge if and only if it's sitting on a cycle or vice versa, it is a bridge if it's not sitting on any cycles. Okay, so what are trees? This is for simple graphs. We call a graph a forest if it has no cycles. If there's no cycles, the graph is a forest. And a tree is a forest that is connected, that has no cycles and is connected. Uh, so a forest can have different connected components, but a tree has only one connected component. So for example, this is a tree, it has no cycles and it's connected. But if I have several of those trees, then I get a forest. And in the next video, we'll have an important theorem uh, for th trees. We will have a characterization of trees. And the theorem will say that in a simple graph, the following statements are equivalent. If you know one of them, all of them are true. If you know, if you know one of them is false, then all of them are false. They fall or arise together. It's a trade union kind of uh, condition. So one of them is G is a tree, meaning that it's a connected a graph with no cycles. Another one is that any two vertices of G connected are connected by a unique path. Another one is that G is connected and every edge is a bridge. Another one is G is connected and the number of edges, when you put absolute values around the set, that means the size of that, the number of edges is one less than the number of vertices. Another condition is that G has no cycles and the number of edges is the number of vertices minus one. And the final one is that G has no cycles, but if any edge is added to E, then the resulting graph will have a cycle. Again, um, I'm saying that if you have a tree, then all of these things are true, but I'm saying more than that. I'm saying that if you know any one of these statements, then you know that G is a tree and you know all the other statements, but that this is what we will cover in the next lecture. So see you in, in, in the next lecture. If you would like to be subjected to videos like this on your feed, then subscribe and like my videos and keep hydrated at all times.